皆様、こんにちは。時間となりましたので、これより大学心環境ホルモン対策国民会議の国際セミナーを開始したいと思います。本日はお忙しい中、えー、お集まりいただき、誠にありがとうございます。今回は第2回目の食品放送、容器放送セミナーということで、えー、先週、ジェーン・ムンケ博士にあのご講演いただいたんですけれども、今回は、えー、パネラーとして日本の専門家の先生方にご参加をいただきます。日本あのそしてディスカッション、パネルディスカッションをしていただくということで、えー、食品容器放送をめぐる状況について議論を深めていただきたいと思います。こういった趣旨ですので、今日は一般の参加の方からの,せつあのご質問をお受けする時間がないくご視聴だけになるということをあ,のあらかじめご了承いただけますようお願い申し上げます。本日は、まず、40分ほど、ジェーン、あのムンケ博士の方から、ご説明をいただい、お話をいただいた後、パネルディスカッションに入りたいと思います。ムンケ博士については、先週もご紹介させていただきましたが、食品容器放送フォーラムのマネージングダイレクター兼チーフサイエンティフィックオフィサーを務められています。本日の講演の資料については、チャット、に、えー、掲載をしておりますのでそちらからダウンロードしていただけますようお願いいたします資料の無断転用はお控えください本日の講演の動画は後日国民会議のホームページにアップする予定ですので、えー、当日の講演の録音録画スクリーンショットなどは、えー、スクリーンショットなどでの撮影は固くお断りいたしますウェビナー終了後にアンケートが表示されますので、今後の講演会のためにどうぞご協力ください。では、あの、早速ですが、ムンケ博士にお話をいただきたいと思います。ドクター、あ、ムンケムンケ ?Can you please start your presentation? こんにちは。Thank you, m a s a m i Thank you very much to the organizers for the kind invitation.、Um, Today, we'll speak about the key developments on food contact materials in Europe. So, I hope that you remember from last week's meeting that chemicals in food packaging and in other food contact articles used in the kitchen and so forth, food processing,、uh, can be a source for chemicals that transfer into food. And we call this chemical transfer migration. So, our starting point is this fact the healthiest foods to eat. Essentially, are unpackaged and unprocessed or minimally processed freshly made food that are seasonal and locally grown. And if we had more time, <laughs> we would spend it on growing our own foods and cooking our own meals. But I know that many of us are very challenged with that. But the reality is this we are very pressed for time, so we depend on processed and packaged foods. And This study here、uh, from Australia、um, shows the three main drivers for the continued use of single use, oftentimes plastic food packaging.、Um, and the three drivers essentially are the globalized business models that make processed, ultra processed foods, the supermarket business models, and of course,、uh, we mentioned that already, our consumers' lack of time. So, ideally, exactly here is where we would start to make changes by changing these drivers or root causes. But of course, it's very difficult to change the current way that businesses operate. And also, oftentimes, we as consumers、uh, cannot find more time to shop, to cook, to eat differently, maybe to even grow our own vegetables. So, therefore, we have to look for other ways how to reduce our exposure to chemicals that migrate from food packaging and other food contact materials into our food. So, in my mind, food packaging should be safe and sustainable. And, and that means it should not contain hazardous chemicals, it should not contain untested chemicals, and it should be fully sustainable. And, and we'll speak about all of that in a moment. But first, let's discuss what the EU is doing about chemicals and food contact materials. So, in 2020, the European Commission published two key strategies that address chemicals in food contact materials. First, 
the EU chemical strategy for sustainability, and secondly, the farm to fork strategy. And basically, these strategies imply that instead of assessing the risk of individual chemicals used to make food content materials, there should be a shift to a generic approach to risk management. So this means that hazardous chemicals are not allowed in food content materials at all. So what is the status quo in Europe? Uh, right now, the food content materials framework regulation states that, here we have it, materials and articles shall be manufactured so that under normal or foreseeable conditions of use, they do not transfer their constituents to food in quantities which could endanger human health. So this is a risk-based approach. It's about the quantities. Uh, it's not a hazard-based approach because uh, the regulation assumes there are quantities that are safe. But according to the chemical strategy for sustainability, there are hazard types that are considered unsafe. We discussed this last week. Basically, for these hazard types, there's no safe threshold assumed to be um, available. So the question now is, uh, as Europe is revising its food contact materials regulation at the moment, will there be a new safety definition in Europe? Currently, the European Commission uh, is requesting input to its impact assessment on the revision uh, of its food contact material regulation. Anyone can comment. Um, and from the framing, I think that it is actually unlikely that the safety definition will fundamentally be changed. But just in case the Commission is thinking about changing its safety definition, I think it should be materials and articles shall be manufactured so that they do not contain constituents which could endanger human health. Interestingly, the Commission is very focused on plastics recycling, even though this is somewhat contradicts with its own waste hierarchy that you can see here. Um, and according to this waste hierarchy, the most effort should be made to prevent waste and to reuse packaging. Recycling is not the most favorable option, but most efforts currently undertaken to reduce packaging waste center around recycling. And we discussed this last week that plastic recycling back into food content material applications is challenging because of the chemical contamination. And now we have a new regulation in Europe on plastic recycling for food contact um, use that just entered into force in early October. Mm. So before this new regulation, many food brands were making plastic pledges uh, to increase their recycled material content in food packaging. But all recycling processes needed to be reviewed by um, needed to be reviewed by the European Food Safety Authority, the EFSA, uh, prior to coming on the market. And as a result, basically, only recycled PT was deemed safe by the EFSA standards. And this led to a shortage of recycled plastics, food grade, available on the European market. Now... The regulation is in force and it covers all plastic types, so not only PET, and also all recycling processes, so mechanical and also chemical recycling. Mm. Under this new regulation, companies can place recycled plastics on the market before their processes have undergone a safety assessment by the authorities. The Commission will publish a register of recycling operations to ensure transparency that, so that it's known who is operating and who's placing material on the market. And so what's important here is that recycled plastics will have to comply with the EU food contact regulation and with its Article 3 that we saw before, the safety definition, and also with the EU food contact plastics regulation uh, 10-2011. But how well does the enforcement of these existing regulations work? According to Dr. Gregor McCombie, who is an expert on chemical analysis and who does enforcement work uh, in, in Switzerland, but also on the EU level, um, food content material enforcement does mostly not work. 
And this here is a slide um, that I took from a presentation that Dr. McCombie gave at a European Commission stakeholder event in 2018. So why does enforcement not work? Basically, this is what uh, Dr. McCombie concludes. Enforcement does work for some substances where there are clear limits of migration and that are easy to measure and that have an analytical method available. Many member states do, do no chemical analysis at all or only very limited chemical analysis. But and you remember the number of over 14,000 different food contact chemicals that we spoke about last week. And I also showed you another slide of Dr. McCombie's uh, where he estimated that there are up to 100,000 possible migrating food contact chemicals. So I'm, I'm rather surprised about the European Commission's plastic recycling regulation, which basically allows for untested materials to be put on the market in contact with food. Basically, this new plastic recycling regulation means that unknown, untested chemicals will continue to migrate into food. And uh, this is not good for consumers and it's also not good for public health. So at Food Packaging Forum, in collaboration with our scientific advisory board, we published a very detailed analysis of the shortcomings uh, of chemical risk assessment for food contact materials. And I invite you to review this in detail uh, in this article here. But just to summarize, I want to briefly touch upon the most important challenges here. So, Basically, the risk of a chemical to cause adverse health impacts is assessed by both the level of exposure to this chemical and what is known about its hazards. And this approach implies that the risk is large if either the exposure is high or if the hazard is very severe or both. But this means that chemicals which do not follow this logic, namely that the dose makes the poison, that's the logic here, uh, those chemicals will be underestimated in terms of their actual risk. And these are the chemicals that have so-called non-monotonic dose responses, so a higher effect at a lower concentration. And this approach also ignores the sensitive windows of development that we know from the DOHAD uh, hypothesis, developmental origins of adult disease hypothesis, um, this approach ignores these sensitive windows where the timing makes the poison. It's not just the dose makes the poison. Um, and it also ignores mixture toxicity where chemicals below the individual effect levels can cause an effect when they're part of a similar acting mixture. And other factors or other aspects uh, of concern here are uncertainty factors that are used in chemical risk assessment. Um, the actual toxicological endpoints that are assessed, which often is only genotoxicity uh, for food contact chemicals, and the reality that exposures can be cumulative. So one chemical can originate from many different sources uh, other than food contact. So it can also come from cosmetics or textiles and so on. Mm. And finally, you have a host of issues related to the analytical chemistry aspects when you want to assess actual exposure levels. Um, so, for example, the absence of analytical standards and of analytical methods to accurately quantify levels of a given chemical in food. And also, importantly, the many unknown chemicals that are present in finished plastics and other types of food contact materials. You cannot quantify those if they are unknown. So what's the way forward? Um, I think that the number and types of chemicals that are intentionally used in food contact materials should be limited a lot. And we should develop novel approaches to assessing the safety of food contact chemicals, which includes the unknown chemicals. But I also have some good news uh, concerning one of the many EDCs, namely BPA. We may finally be seeing some significant movement in the right direction here. So in December one year ago, December 2021, the European Food Safety Authority, the EFSA, uh, published a draft scientific opinion on BPA and they proposed to lower the tolerable daily intake or TDI, which is the safe level of exposure 
to this chemical by a factor of 100,000. And now we're waiting for this proposal to be finalized. And I actually expect the EFSA to publish its final scientific opinion at any moment now, probably this week. So if this new TDI is confirmed, this would mean that the migration limit for BPA would be 2.4 nanograms per kilogram food or less to account for other sources of exposure to BPA. And this, in my mind, would mean that BPA would effectively be banned because a migration limit of less than two parts per trillion is simply too low to enforce. So another piece of good news that I want to share uh, is the ESTA scientific opinion on non-monotonic dose responses in chemical risk assessments. And this affects all EDCs. So this was published in October last year, and it acknowledges that the dose makes the poison cannot be applied universally, and that for substances with non-monotonic dose response in the low dose range, more detailed assessment is required. But what I don't know is what this opinion now implies and whether the EU Commission will now reassess all authorized chemicals and identify mechanisms of action for those with non-monotonic dose response, or if instead this means that the EU Commission will completely change its approach to chemical risk assessment as such, and what I would welcome, just focus only on, on the hazard identification. And then, logically, this would mean banning EDCs from being used at all. That, of course, would be what I would support from the scientific point of view. And finally, we have the issue of mixtures. We know that many different chemicals and food content materials migrate simultaneously. And we know that setting safe exposure levels for individual chemicals is not sufficiently protected for public health. Luckily, the European Commission is now committed to addressing the mixture of all chemicals that migrate from finished food packaging. And so we're now waiting for the revised food content materials regulation to be published by the commission later this year, hopefully. So we expect the, the draft uh, regulation for the end of 2023, actually, or sometime in 2023. Okay. And regarding this, just, I just want to briefly highlight these two articles here, but there are many, many more. Um, both of these are written by European scientists who studied the effects of EDC mixtures in birth cohorts. And they found that prenatal exposure to mixtures of chemicals below the individual threshold led to decreased IQ in boys at age seven and also uh, to language delays. So this is very concerning and it shows that our current approach to chemical risk assessment is not reassuring and we do need to question it. So this assumption is essentially wrong uh, from a scientific perspective, but it is represented in, in regulations across the world, including in Japan. So what can be done? I mentioned that the European Commission will hopefully make it mandatory to assess the mixtures of all migrating chemicals, including the unknown chemicals. And um, so that would be a good first step. But then we also need to assess these mixtures for their potential to disrupt the endocrine system. So not only test for genotoxicity and also for other several important endpoints. And so I would like to introduce a novel concept here that we've developed with our scientific advisor board. We call it the six clusters of disease. This is basically a grouping of the most prevalent chronic diseases in the global human population. And this includes cancers and so on. Uh, this is unpublished work. And what we propose is that all food contact chemicals that are either intentionally used or that migrate from finished uh, food contact articles, uh, like food packaging, all of these chemicals are tested for their potential to cause one of these chronic diseases. So like today, we test for genetic We want to have mechanistic based in vitro testing for endpoints related to all of these six classes of disease. So basically, again, unpublished uh, graph. Uh, this means that we expand both the toxicological and the chemical focus of the testing. So instead of testing one endpoint, namely genotoxicity, we test multiple endpoints. And 
uh, these are all relevant for the six clusters of disease. And instead of only testing one intentionally added substance that is used to make food packaging, we test all of the chemicals that migrate from finished food contact articles, and we test for the mixture. So, so this is our vision for safer food contact materials where, where public health concerns are the drivers for improved testing. So if this new approach is implemented one day, it will bring us a lot closer to having safe food packaging because we will be much more able to ensure that there are no hazardous chemicals present and there will also be no untested chemicals present anymore. And with that, I would like to conclude that food packaging is very closely linked to how society produces and consumes food. Convenience, process, ultra-process, globalized business models, and it's not simple to replace plastic food packaging or food packaging in general, or even to deal with the known hazardous chemicals that are migrating. Still, there are some promising developments uh, in the EU, namely the Chemical Strategy for Sustainability, the EFSA Scientific Opinion on BPA and Non-Monotonic Dose Response, and the Commission's commitment to address the mixture toxicity, including from chemicals that migrate from finished food contact articles. But ultimately, to truly improve the safety, the definition of safety, the legal definition of safety must be changed. And the effects of all food contact chemicals on all chronic diseases that are increasingly prevalent must systematically be addressed. So I would like to thank all my colleagues at the Food Packaging Forum. And also thanks to our scientific advisory board. You can see us here at our recent meeting. We had a nice dinner. And if you want some more information, please come and visit our website. And uh, with that, I thank you for your attention and I look forward to our discussion. Thank you. 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 えー、当国民会議の代表の中下よりいくつか質問をさせていただきたいと思います。はい、あのどうも大変あの貴重な講演をありがとうございました。あのお,おっしゃられたことは最もだなと私たちも思っているんですけれども、なかなかえどのようにしてそれを実現していけばいいのかっていう、特に私はあの法律家なもんだから、えっ、ー、と法制度とかを通じて。いかに実現していけばいいのかということを考えているんですけれどもなかなか今のリスク評価ベースの,あの化学物質管理というのが、えーまあ、本当にあの強固なものとして全部法体系ができているので新しい概念が入れられないという状況が日本では続いています。まあ、それに対してそれで、えー、といくつかあの質問させていただきたいんですけれどもちょっと基本的なところですが、えー、まずあのこの食品 EU における、えー、食品接触材料の規制というのは、えー、リーチとはまた別なんでしょうかリーチはこのリ,リ,リーチですね、えー、それはこの分野をカバーしていないでしょうか。No, it's not. Um, only to a, a certain extent. So the human health impacts of food contact chemicals is not covered by REACH. The environmental impacts when it comes to production of the chemicals that are used to make food contact materials, that is covered by REACH. But a lot of those chemicals are used in many other applications as well. So, 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 をあのを安全性をカバーする法律というのはリーチの枠組みとは異なっていてリーチは私の理解では、えー、一応あの化学物質は全て登録してその中で、えー、高懸念物質であるとかそういうものを指定して、えー、もちろんリスク評価を行っていくわけですけれどもこであの用途ごとの例えば高懸念物質に指定されると用途ごとの許可が必要だというふうに理解をしているんですけれどもそのような枠組みを食品接触材料の規制については持っていないということでしょうか Yes, but it's complicated. So we, we have a regulation for plastic food contact materials 
um, and also for recycled plastic, for ceramics, um, and for cellulose and what is called active and intelligent materials. For those, we have specific regulation. And here, anyone who wants to use a chemical in these materials needs to get approval from, from the EFSA, from the European Food Safety Authority first. Mm. But for the other materials like paper and board, um, uh, coated metal, coat, uh, metal packaging, coatings on metal, uh, and so on, um, it, it depends on the European Union member states how they regulate these. So we call these the non-harmonized materials. And importantly, two things. Um, EFSA does a different assessment than what ECHA does for REACH. So ECHA is the authority that uh, enforces REACH or that controls REACH, better said, because the member states enforce. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also um, the, the, the member states can have very different approaches, mm -hmm. uh, which is, it's a real challenge here. And none, no one looks at the finished article at the moment. So yes. no one assesses these chemicals that are migrating. Oh. Uh, one more point. Uh, polymers that are backbones of plastics are not required to be registered under REACH right now. Oh. Mm. So that, that's a huge challenge at the moment. The Commission has a process ongoing. We're trying to register polymers. It's very difficult, very difficult. プラスチック製の、じゃ、容器包装についてちょっと伺いたいんですけれども、そちらの方は一応リーチが使われて、リーチのカバーがあるということで、そうすると例えばEDCなんかはその部分では規制されているんでしょうか。um, not for food contact. Food contact materials made of plastic have their own regulation. It's EU 10 2011. That's separate from REACH, and uh, there are several EDCs that are allowed to be used in food contact plastics in Europe. あの、スライドの9番のところに、はい。これが現行法の定義があるんですけれども、この目的を達成するために、ど、どのような規制の枠組みなんでしょうか。例えば あの、こういう物質を指定して、この物質について、え、溶質を、溶質の規制を、溶質の濃度はいくら以内にしないといけないとか、そういうような規制なんでしょうか。Yes, so for plastics, but only in the case of plastics and ceramics, active intelligent packaging, um, and cellulose, um, uh, we have uh, specific migration limits. So, and this is for the chemicals that have been authorized to be used to make the plastic. Um, and it's about, it's less than a thousand chemicals. It's, it's just, just below a thousand chemicals right now. Um, and for some of them, there is a so-called specific migration limit. And that is what, what would be enforced. But <laughs> as the commission itself has communicated, um, maybe for about half of those authorized chemicals, they actually have uh, a method or a standard available to actually measure it. So, so they've authorized chemicals with specific migration limits that cannot actually be measured. So, you can see bisphenol A, or or EDC, そういうものが含まれているんでしょうか。イエス。わかりました。ありがとうございます。もう一つだけ教えていただきたいんです。あのスライドの八リスクマネジメントの一般的なアプローチ。これは実はあの私があのEUの持続可能な化学物戦略を
it, it, ha it means hazard-based assessment, mm. right? Yeah. And it, it's for political reasons, I guess, mm. that they can't write hazard-based assessment. Um, and we have this in action uh, for, for the mutagens, for example. Um, uh, you know, and, and that's the case, uh, as I understand it globally, uh, chemicals that are mutagenic should not be used uh, unless you have a really, really good reason um, to use them, right? So mm -hmm. it's, 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 it assumes there's no threshold for chemicals that have such severe hazards. Mm -hmm. And I would like to expand that to EDCs and to other chemicals that I think have very severe hazards. Mm -hmm. and, and the chemical strategy for sustainability does just that. It lays out the types of hazards which the European Commission considers very, very severe. And so it suggests that for these types of hazards, we have this generic approach to risk management, but it's not as such uh, widely implemented in regulation yet. Mm. The direction to go. Unfortunately not. I think that would make a lot of sense. Uh, and there have been attempts about 10 years ago, there was an attempt from the European Parliament to push for regulation like that, but it, it's, it's, it didn't make it. And, and also just to add, keep in mind, even plastics manufacturers don't know exactly the chemical composition of the finished plastic because of all the unknown NIAS. Yes, exactly. That is that is the list. I can I'll send you a link, then you can review the list. Thank you so much. はい、あ、すいません。ありがとうございました。えっと、あの、ちょっと時間が押して参りましたので、方がいいと思うんですけれども、よろしいんでしょうか。そうですか。じゃあ、いいですか。あの、私の方から一つお伺いしたいと思います。あの、先ほど今日あのBPAの規制が強化されるかもしれないということをご紹介いただきましたが、
事務局になってるというふうに伺ってるんですけれども、えっと、に日本では実は、えー、容器包装も含めてプラスチックに含まれる有害化学物質についての規制があリサイクルにあたっての規制がないんですね。なので、えー、私たちはそれをぜひ入れてほしいということを要求しているんですけれどもこういったような点についてこの国際条約化というのでそういうものも盛り込まれていくというふうに考えてよろしいんでしょうか、um, I think so, but the,、uh, the treaty is not finalized. So it only started now with the negotiations.、Um, actually, last week,、um, the, the, the UN held negotiations in Uruguay. And what I was not there, but what I've heard from my colleagues who were there, it sounds like there will be a, the aspect of human health included, and there will be a strong.、Um, A、uh, critical review of the solutions that are proposed. And that the scientists that are participating in the negotiations are very concerned about、uh, recycling. So we, we will do our best to put that to the attention of, of the decision makers. But we'll have to wait. I don't know <laughs> yet. We'll see in two years. あすみません。あの、一つ前なんですけど、ビスフェノール関連で、ちょうど遠山先生がおな、あの、それに関連したことをで質問したいので、続けてさせていただきたいということを、今、あの、連絡が来まして、えー、東京大学名誉教授の遠山先生から、えー、さっきのビスフェノールについて、ちょっとご質問お願いします。Thank you very much. Uh, do, uh, Dr. Munker, uh, uh, その、えー、そちらの方の、あの、フードパッケージングフォーラムが非常にこの安全で持続,的持続可能な食品放送を追求するという目的のために素晴らしい活動をしているということを非常にあの今日の今日の講演で知りました。それでまずあの時間もあまりないのでいくつか質問をさせていただきたいと思います。BPA に関してですが、ちょっとスライドを使、えー、シェアをさせていただきます。いかがでしょうか Can you see now? あはい、映、えー、っております。Yes, now I can see it. はい、あの先ほどご説明がありましたが、BPA の、えー、TDI というのは日米欧で異なっています。うんでえー、欧州ではご承知のように、2015年に、あ,あのえー、それまでの、えー、値の 0.05mg パーキログラムボディウェイトパーデイから厳しくして 0.004 にしました。そして昨年の21年12月には先ほどムンケ博士がおっしゃったようにさらに厳しく 0.00004 という値にするように提案をしています。ドクター・フンキ氏、ムケがおっしゃったように、この、えー、今、えー、提案されている数値は実際に測定不可能な値ですから、実質的には BPA の使用を禁止するということを提案しているというふうにえー、いうことになります。で、えー、そういう意図を持って、このリスク評価をしているということで、いうふう、というふうに考えていいのかどうか、それが第一の質問です。Um, I, EFSA、uh, does risk assessment, and, and so they don't have a risk management intention. The risk management Um, so, the regulations are done by the European Commission.、Mm. And, and so, EFSA communicates what, based on the science, they think the tolerable daily intake should be.、Mm. And so, this re most recent scientific opinion, this draft that was published a year ago, assumed that the tolerable daily intake has to be lowered significantly due to effects that were observed on the immune system.、Mm. So, there's no intention as such、oh, behind there. But the Commission will now have to act on that、uh, scientific assessment.、はい、ありがとうございます。リスクアセスメントとリスクマネジメントを、えー、区別をして
対応しているということで理解をしました。Okay. 2番目の質問は、えー、先ほどの吉高さんの質問に関係しますが、BPA の、えー、規制が入って、え、え、を実質的に使わなくなる、なっていますが、それの代替物質として、BP、えー、BPF、BPAF、BPAF、それから BPS といったものが使われています。で特に BPS に関しては、えー、哺乳瓶を中心に使われています。で、えー、シンガポール食品庁は、例えばですが、えー、この BPS は、PES からは溶出しないと。溶出してもその量は極めて低くて健康には影響がないという論文をもとに実績には安全であるということで消費者へアドバイスをしていますし、現在、この BPS を BPA の代わりに使ったこの PES をベースにしたえ、容器というものが使われ、えー、哺乳瓶としても使われています。で、その根拠となっている、えー、科学的論文というのは、の一つは、この、えー、論文です。で、えー、このことに関して、えー、今、えー、その、フードパッケージフォーラムとしては、どのようにお考えでしょうか。うん Thank you for, for that question.、Um, so, I just put a link in the chat to another scientific study where BPS was measured to migrate.、Um, and I think that, the, of course, there's less migration of BPS because the polymer, the, the、uh, PS polymer, is, is much stronger than polycarbonate made with, with BPA. Um, but still, the toxicity of BPS is assumed to be worse than for BPA.、Mm. And so I would not be calmed、uh, by very low uh, <laughs> uh, levels detected of migrating. So th that's the first aspect.、Mm. Uh, the, the second part is、um, that in, in the study that you show here, there was no actual testing done for EDC. Properties. The, the scientists, as far as I can tell, use the, the TTC, and TTC explicitly exempts EDCs. So it, it is irrelevant here, in my opinion, to use TTC. You will not guarantee that you do not have estrogenic effects. And also, it doesn't look at mixture toxicity. And, and so, essentially, what would need to be done would be to test the oval migrate of these plastic bottles、uh, using relevant endpoints. And I would not recommend using plastic, regardless of what type of plastic, as a baby feeding bottle. I suggest use glass. Thank you very much. The details of the study are in the next session. If you have any other questions, I will be able to answer them. The Singapore Health Authority is also interested in the ガラス容器を使うようにということを、うんえー、この消費者へのアドバイスのところに書いていると思いますあのちょっと時間が押してまいりましたので遠山先生ちょっと一旦、はい、あのはい、はい、すみません止めていただいてはい、はい、あのあと中でも福田先生にはあの北海道大学の、えー、池田明子先生と京都大学の原田先生にあのコメントをお願いしておるので、えー、まず池田先生からお願いいたしたいと思います。はい、えっ、ー、と北海道大学の池田です。今日はあの非常にあの勉強になる話をありがとうございました。Thank you very much for a wonderful talk。で、私はあの環境疫学で子どもの調査をしていますので、その調査の視点で質問をさせていただきます。So I do an environmental epidemiology study. So Focus on children's health. So, my question is rather uh, not uh, scientific, not polit politics. <laughs> で、あの一つ目の質問としては、今回フードパッケージとおっしゃっているのは、あの加工品のふに用いられるフードパッケージだけなのか、あるいはその自宅で自分があのさまざまな食品をストレージするときに
あの市販のものを使うと思いますので、そういったものも含まれているのかということをお聞きしたいと思います。So first of my question is about when when you mentioned about the food packages, is this a considered about the processed food covered by、uh, packages or include all the consumer products what you can use to store whatever you cooked at your home? So yeah, it's the latter. And anything that is purposefully put into contact with food. 2つ目の質問は、あの、文慶先生が今日おっしゃった、あのあ、新しい将来に向けてのビジョンは、あの、今後の規制にとって非常に重要と思っています。So、the second comment is,、uh, your vision is, could be very effective in the future ways to protect human.、Uh, It includes alternative substitutes as well as many different endpoints. So, I know, at the CBJ, you are a guy, type of suit, yeah, hocker, no end point, more from a letter to you, who you are, can you must. But I see, so not to go to the food package, or so that it's 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 so t h t Could would be very effective. I think then you need to、uh, test all individual new food p a c k a g e coming into the product. So I wonder if it's very if it's possible or effective or not. I, I wonder the same. <laughs>、um, I think they are, that's a challenge.、Um, the other challenge also is that、uh, it, with our proposed approach, it's、um, An improvement from the status quo. Right now, we only test intentionally added substances and we only test for genotoxicity, more or less.、Um, of course, it's not going to be perfect. That we know that、uh, in vitro testing、um, has many uncertainties associated with this approach. So it, it, will, it will improve, it would improve the current situation, but it, it's not, it doesn't have perfect scientific、uh, you know, certainty. Um, I think the only way to go about is we have to simplify the materials. We cannot,、uh, as we do it now, just simply allow anyone to produce whatever they like.、Um, and so, yes, that will mean that the regulation has to change quite dramatically. And it will mean we need to simplify. We need to simplify the chemicals that are used and simplify the materials.、Mm. And probably、so、also simplify. The way that we produce and consume food, but that's a different, different aspect. <laughs> Thank you very much. The last question is: Is it okay to be able to do this? Is it okay to be able to do this? Is it okay to be able to do this? Is it okay to be able to do this? Is it okay to be able to do this? Is it okay to be able to do this? Is it okay to be able to do this? Is it okay to be able to do this? Is it okay to be able to do this? Is it okay to be able to do this? Study if you have any requests or suggestions, please. Thank you, Professor Ikeda. I, I would love to、um, continue our exchange.、Uh, we are actually currently working on、uh, also microplastics,、uh, which originate from normal use of food packaging. And I think that is also a very interesting area. So it's, it's about the chemicals in plastic, but it's also about the particle. Toxicity, and、um, there we also are collaborating、uh, on, on several birth cohort studies.、Um, so that, that could be something to, to continue the exchange on. Thank you very much. 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 京都大学の原田先生の方からお,お願いいたします。はい、<笑>はい、京都大学の原田です。え、今回は非常にあの興味深いお話、あの私があのまあ、暴露評価の研究しているところからすると、はい、それでじゅ非常に興味深く聞かせていただきました。えっと、I listened、uh, to your、uh, talk、uh, with great interest from my research background in exposure assessment. あで、えー、最初の、えー、ちょっと聞いていきたいことというのがですね、えっとえー、まずその
科学分析が十分に行われていないというふうにまあ紹介されたんですこれはあの行政側があまりそのエフォートをさ割かないのか、怠慢なのか、もしくは製造する企業の方がですが、ね、分析のための標準とか方法というのを十分与えないまま、あの市場に導入したのかということと、最後にあの、まあ、そういったものを解決するために科学分、分析科学の研究者というのはどういうことを。あの貢献すべきかということですね。えー、っと、I, I, I send the、uh, message、uh, by、uh, chat, but I read it、uh, again. I,、uh, the first thing I would like to ask、uh, you is the reason why the chemical、uh, analysis for、uh, so、food、uh, packaging、uh, materials、uh, is not sufficiently、uh, done.、Uh, is this administrative negligence or is it、uh, because of the、uh, manufacturing companies are reluctant to provide the、uh, method or、uh, standards for the chemical analysis? And finally, I、uh, please、uh, give us a、uh, so、suggestion what can、uh, analytical chemist、uh, do for the safe and sustainable、uh, food、uh, packaging? <laughs> It's a very, very good question, and、uh, I can only tell you what I think.、Uh, it's a, it's a guess. I don't, of course, know all the details. It's probably a combination of many things, but probably the most important aspect is that when you make plastics, it's a very aggressive chemical reaction, and、uh, you, you don't use very pure chemicals to make plastics. You, you use Chemicals that have a lot of impurities, those impurities will also react chemically. And those reaction byproducts will also be in the finished plastic.、Um, and then we have other chemical reactions, breakdown reactions of the additives, and so on. So plastics really always are a very complex mixture of chemicals. And、um, the, many of the impurities、uh, or Or reaction byproducts, I should say, like the oligomers, are not available as standards. You cannot buy、uh, most oligomers. So, so, for some polymers like polystyrene,、uh, there's a couple of really excellent studies from、uh, colleagues in Japan looking at toxicity of、uh, polystyrene oligomers, finding them to be estrogenic also. But for PET, it's, I, I don't think that it's possible to buy any PET oligomers、mm. on the market.、Uh, and so, how, do, how can we measure these chemicals if we cannot get the standards? So, that's one part of the problem.、Um, I think the, the, the other part is、um, that you know, th there's also not much information on the formulations. Of course,、mm. this is business、uh, <laughs> trade secrets. And when enforcement authorities try to get information, they oftentimes don't, don't receive the information. So I can send you a study on that,、uh, where that was done. And regarding your, your question, what can、uh, analytical chemists do?、Um, so I think there's an important role to play here、uh, doing the non targeted analysis of、um, overall migrate. From food packaging.、Um, and、uh, we have also contributed to making libraries available for, for chemical analysis. So I, I, I'm sure you are familiar with the Norman network, but I can put a link in the chat.、Uh, that's one of the libraries you can use.、Um, I think the,、uh, the vision that I presented today will mean that we, we need to combine. Uh, biological effect directed analysis with chemical analysis. And I see a huge role there for analytical chemists to collaborate with the in vitro toxicologists.、Uh, when a, a fraction of a migrate is found to be、uh, somehow active biologically, then we need the chemists to identify what the driving chemicals are in there. So that's, I, I see that as being your future, those two roles. はい、ありがとうございました。本当にあの同意するしても本当にあのえそういった方向性を目指したいと思っております。あ、uh,、Thank you for your uh so valuable uh opinion and suggestion. I completely agree with uh with them. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. ただ先生、あのもうこれ以上な
おしまいでよろしいんですか。はい、私からは。はい、十分です。はい、ありがとうございました。あの、では、ちょっとだけまだ時間があるので、えっ、ー、と、パネラーの方から、あの、質問されたい方がいましたら、いませんでしょうか。あの、えっ、ー、と、私一つ、先週、あ、すいません。富山先生。あじゃあ、はい、おさあ今あの、共有しますんでそ、その間にどうぞ、あのあはい、あの先週、ムンケ先生があの、えー、メラミンとスチレンがあのかなり危ないというふうにおっしゃっていたんですけれども、えー、とそれはモノマーとして危ないのか、それとも、えー、中に入っている添加物の問題なのか、ちょっとその辺をお伺いしたかったんですが、よろしくお願いします。No, it's because of the monomer. Uh, and in the case of styrene, it's also because, the, as we just discussed, when you polymerize styrene, you make polystyrene, you get styrene、uh, oligomers. And some of those have been tested in vivo also for estrogenicity、um, and, and they're suspected EDCs.、Mm. But also, styrene is, a, is, a, is you know, it's, it's of concern for, for its carcinogenicity. ありがとうございます。あの、遠山先生、すみません。吉高さんももう一つなんか質問どうしてもしたいらしいので、遠、はい、山先生、手短にすみません。いやいや、吉高さん、どうぞ。あ、そうですか。いえいえ、遠山先生、どうぞ。いやいやいや、どうぞどうぞ。じゃあ、すみません。じゃあ、ちょっと、あの、えっ、ー、と、私の方から一つ確認をさせていただきたいことがございます。あの、先ほど、ムンケ博士の方から、えっ、ー、と、プラス、あの、コミッションレギュレーションということで、プラスチックの意図的な使用について、リストが作成されているというあのご説明があったんですけれどもあ、ありました。で、それ、そしてそれと別にその後に、あの、もう少し使っていく、えー、物質を、食品容器包装に使っていくものを制限しなければいけない、ポジティブリスト性を導入しなければいけないというお話があったように思ったんですが、そのリストとプラスチックに意図的に使うリストをもっとこう限定的にしていくべきだっていうご趣旨なのか、それともプラスチック以外の素材をについてのポジティブリストを作るべきなのかとおっしゃってるのか、ちょっとそこがよくわからなかったので、もう少しそのポジティブリストについて。ご説明をしていただければなと思いました。いや、thank you for, for that question. It's very complicated. <笑>、um, basically, that, that positive list is the list of chemicals that have been authorized by the European Commission to make plastics, to make food contact plastics.、Um, and not all of those chemicals have been reviewed by EFSA. Some of them were reviewed、uh, maybe 30, 40 years ago, and they,、uh, they sort of got grandfathered in. EFSA has only been active, I think, since 2008. I, I'm not, I think,、uh, but around then. So not, not terribly long. And so any chemicals author, authorized since then have been uh, uh, reviewed by EFSA with a scientific opinion. But chemicals that Were on the list before then, don't always have a publicly available scientific opinion, like bisphenol A,、uh, uh, bisphenol S, sorry,、um, uh, or benzophenones.、Um, I think that, that that's one of them where we could not get a,、uh, a scientific opinion.、Um, okay. And there's no process for re,、uh, automatically、uh, reviewing, reassessing these chemicals. ありがとうございました。豊山先生、あの、手短にすみません、お願いします。はい、時間が迫っております。はい、あの、今、共有してますが、スライド映ってますか。あの、ムーケ先生が、えー、この欧州のリスク評価に関して、考え方がこう変更になるかもしれないという重要な指摘をなさいました。で、現在、この、えー、材料入り成形品は、この、その健康に、人の健康、今見えないんですかあ、人の健康を損なう可能性のある量の成分をということで、量ということが定義されています。ところが、え
、えー、現在、この、その、量という概,あ概念が削除されて、もう、成分を含まないというふうに変更になるというふうに言われました。もしそうなりますと、いわゆる病的な判断、リスクの判断ではなくて、ハザードとしてそれがあるかなしかで、オールはナッシング、つまりゼロリスクを追求するという方向に、えー、リスク評価の仕方が変わるというふうに考えられるのですけれども、そのように、そういう方向を欧州の委員会は目指していると,いというふうに考えてよろしいでしょうか。No,、uh, this is my proposal. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Your proposal. <laughs> I, I, want, I would like this. I am not a lawyer,、um, but, but I, I wrote this based on the chemical strategy for sustainability and the farm to fork strategy, which is a very high level opinion of the European Commission. And now they are revising the food contact materials regulation, and we will see whether they will change the safety definition or not. I think they should, based on these two strategies, but it, I don't know if they will. I doubt it, to be honest. もしもゼロリスクを追求するということになると、えー、っといろいろな意味で、えー、論議が必要じゃないかと思います。Thank you very much. どうもありがとうございます。どういたしまして。あの、時間が押してまいりましたので、すいませんが、ここで質疑は終わらせていただいて、あの、最後に中下代表の方から挨拶をして終わりにしたいと思います。えー、ムンク先生、あの、また、諸先生方、大変ありがとうございました。Thank you, Dr. コロ o ラ。ムンク先生。あのどうもありがとうございました。大変あのエキサイティングで、えー、何でしょうあの深い議論ができたんではないかなというふうに思っています。で、あのムンケ先生の最初に<笑>提案していただいたあの講演の中身もですね、まあやっぱり日本ではこれがなかなか課題だと認識されてないような問題があのたくさんあったというふうに思い思います。でえー、そのご提案自身は私はあの今の,あのハザードベースもリスクベースだけでなくハザードベースもある種のものについては入れていくという考え方について、えー、賛成をしておりまして、えー、国私たちとしても、まあ、それをなんとか実現していけるように日本の社会の中でですねえー、これから頑張っていきたいなと思います。まあ、遠山先生のお話が少しあったんですけど必ずしもゼロリスクということではなくやっぱり一定の有害化学物質についてはやめていこうつまり過信法の一徳をもっともっと活用してあの仕組みをいろんなものを増やしていこうということだと私は認識をしていますでそう,そう言われて今日のご説明を聞いて初めてあなるほどとか思ったんですけれども、まあ、リーチの中でやっぱり一定の化学物質を高懸念化学物質に指定してよほどの、まあ、そ,そこはリスクマネジメントはきちっとやるというこういうことなんですけれどもそうでなければ許可しないよというふうなあのアプローチを取られていてでその中に毒性がなくても VPVB のようなモードまで含まれてきているということを、まあ、あのあなんでこういうのを含まれてきてるんだなというふうに思ったんですけれどもなかなか毒性が分かってくるのは後で VPVB なんていうのはもうその毒性が分かった時にはえー、もう皆さんの体内に蓄積されてしまっているということがあるわけですからやはり人の健康を守るという観点からするとそういったアプローチ、まあ、これがよく原則に基づくアプローチだと、まあ、私,私なんかは思っているんですけれどもそういったアプローチを実現させていく必要があるんだなというふうなことが今日、えーまあ、本当にあのムンケス博士のご講演を聞いて、えー改めて認識をしましまた皆さんも今日聞かれてえもうごめんなさいパネリストだけでやっているんですけれどもあごめんなさい何かありましたかあそうかこれ翻訳していただかないといけないはいはいお願いしますすいませんありがとうございましたで今日あの実はこういうことをあのパネリストとえっ、ー、とムンケ博士とがいろいろと質問を通じてまあ少し意見を交換するといったような
あのことを参加者の皆さんになんか膨張していただくような格好なんですけれどもでもなんかこれこういうやり方って今までやったことはないんですけれどもこれが初めてでどうなるかなと実は思っていまして専門家って言ってもあのジェパンには法律家とそれから科学者の先生たちが得られるのでどう大丈夫かしらとずっと思っておりましたが。今日の、まあ、皆さんお聞きになってあのご意見ぜひ後でいただければと思いますけれどもあの私はあなかなかあの議論が深まっていてよかったなっていうふうに思いましたまたこういうあの企画をジェパでもやっていければともちろんこれはモンケ先生があの私たちのそれぞれの立場を理解した上で、えー、適切なあ回答とそれからあの考え方の提示ですねということをしていただけたからだというふうに思っておりまして最後にもう一度文家先生に感謝の言葉を申し上げて終わりの挨拶とさせていただきたいと思います Thank you very much どうもありがとうございます Thank you so much for having me Thank you so much It's been a great pleasure and a great honor Thank you so much で博士とあの通訳のサービスは終了させていただいてあと自分的なちょっとあのことをお伝えしたいと思います。あの今日は長時間にわたりありがとうございました。あの終了後にあのぜひアンケートが出てきますのでやってください。それから来年ですね、えー、まず1月14日土曜日午後2時から池田敦子先生のあのご講演があります。えっ、ー、とちょっともう時間がないので細かいことは申し上げませんが、えー、ビスフェノールとかあのフタル酸エステルプラスチック関連のものから出てくるものが子どもにどう影響するかそれについての、えー、お話です。それから、2月14日には、土曜日2時半より、こちらは、国立医薬品食品衛生研究所の名誉所員の菅野淳先生から、発達障害と化学物質についてお話ししていただく予定です。チラシができましたら、あの皆さんにお配りしますが、ぜひあのお越しいただくようにお願いいたします。では、あのアンケートの方、よろしくお願いします。今日は本当にありがとうございました。これで終了させていただきます。